Hi, I'm Linda, and I'd like to invite you out to Caldwell Zoo to see our new spider exhibit. We have tarantulas from four different continents on display. They're absolutely fascinating. Some of them are beautiful. We know you'll all have fun to come out and see our spiders. My name's William, uh, and we're looking through the new Caldwell Zoo tarantula exhibit, uh, new this year for 2012. And uh, we have a, a myriad of tarantulas on exhibit, uh, nine different species from four different continents. So okay. Um, when is the first day that these tarantulas are available uh, for people to look at? Uh, today is the first day. Anytime from now uh, through the, the rest of the year, these tarantulas will be here. People can come out and, and uh, get acquainted with them and uh, learn a little more about their history. Okay. Um, they look a little scary. Um, are there any myths attached to tarantulas? Uh, yes, ma'am. There's, there's quite a few. Uh, actually, through uh, over the years, uh, tarantulas have been uh, persecuted for many reasons, but uh, the fears are sort of unfounded. Most of the tarantulas' uh, venom is not dangerous to people. And the majority of uh, uh, spider bites are actually by other species, not by tarantulas themselves. Okay, how many do you have in the exhibit today? Uh, on exhibit for people to see today, there are 12 uh, tarantulas from ranging from North America to South America to Africa to uh, Asia. Okay, and this exhibit is located in what area of the zoo? It's in the North American Herpetarium uh, down in the Texas area. Okay. Okay. What is this? This is a molt from a tarantula. So this is after they, if they crawl out of their old exoskeleton, and they do this either to facilitate growth or to repair injured body parts. They can, uh, throughout their travels, they can lose uh, fangs or eyes or even legs. And as they molt a couple of times, these things will regenerate and come back and make the spider whole and new again. Okay, so it's almost like a snake losing its skin. Very much so. Okay, when they come out, are they, is there any variations in what they look like? They're usually a lot lighter in color, and they're very, very soft and vulnerable to predators. And so they usually try to stay hidden in burrows after they molt until their skin sort of hardens and, and dries up a little bit. Okay, how often do they do this? Uh, young spiders will do it uh, much more frequently, maybe every month or six weeks, because they're growing faster. As the tarantula gets older and gets to its maximum size, it slows down significantly and may only mold once or twice a year. So what kind of animal are, are we looking at right now? This is a Sri Lankan ornamental tarantula. It's an arboreal species, which means it spends the majority of its life in trees. And uh, she would either make a little uh, burrow for herself in a rotten limb or hide under some uh, some peeling bark on a tree. And you can see by her colors that she would blend in just perfectly with uh, most barks and lichen and stuff that you'd find on the trunks of trees. So she'd be very hard to see. Camouflage is very effective. Um, she looks pretty big. Does that mean that she's maybe a little fast or are there any special uh, not precautions? Not necessarily. Uh, you can't really uh, equate big to, to fast because some of the really large tarantulas because they're so heavy bodied are a little bit slower but she is one of the quicker of, of the tarantula species that we have. <laughs> you just see her kick just then. You see that little bald spot on her abdomen right there? That's a void of hairs on the back? Yes. That's because of her defense mechanism. When I, when I touch her, uh, she'll use those back legs like that. Oh, my. And she'll kick. She's flicking those urticating hairs, and so you don't really want to let them get in your face. Oh. But that's one of their, you know, well, I mean, it's not, as long as you're not, like, right down there. Remember I was telling you earlier, if a predator is coming down with its snout, normally it would try to eat something. It would come right down there, so your nose and your mouth and your eyes would be just mere centimeters or inches from the tarantula. If they were able to, to uh, disconnect those hairs and fling them into the eyes, it would be very irritating and proves a very successful defense uh, mechanism for them. What kind of tarantula is this that we're looking at? This is a native species from East Texas, a Texas brown tarantula. This is what uh, you encounter uh, around here if you were fortunate enough to find one in the wild. Okay, um, so you're probably not going to encounter one unless you go into their turf. Is that uh, yeah, correct? I mean, they're, they're obviously not a uh, not an urban type of uh, species uh, that's comfortable around uh, humans. Uh, so it, it's a very adaptable species, though. You, you find them in East Texas piney woods to uh, grasslands. To this is our male. You saw a female out there, uh, bird eater, mm -hmm. and uh, with the bird cage in it. That's the, that's the male. He looks almost identical to her. His abdomen's a little bit smaller. 
he's kind of crouched up in a defensive posture right now. He don't want to do a whole lot. This is one of the largest tarantula species in the world. How large can they get? Uh, this particular species has been known to grow to uh, approximately 11 inches in diameter, which is close to a dinner plate size. Okay, and that's not native to East Texas? No, ma'am. This is a, a South American species from the uh, rainforest in Brazil. And we're really glad they're not native to here.